So what is the truth about AIDS and what can we do about it? HIV is still a relatively new phenomenon in global history. We only identified the virus as recently as 1983. The first cases, first five cases, which were among gay men, were only identified in 1981. In 1985, scientists still thought that heterosexuals were immune, how wrong they were. We now know that 95% of all new infection worldwide is among men and women as a result of relationships between them. We thought the blood supply was safe, how wrong we were. We were pumping, uh, doctors in the medical community were pumping pints of infected blood into patients right across the world without realizing there was a particular risk. Uh, we thought that breast milk was safe, how wrong we were. We now know a whole generation of babies have been infected unwittingly by being suckled at the breast of a mother who has HIV when fortunately they had been born in the first place without HIV. Yes, uh, we also know that only a small minority of babies from HIV infected mothers will carry the virus even though they all test positive to start with because they have their mother's antibodies and that confuses the test. But how big is the problem? Well again there is some uncertainty. The latest studies seem to suggest that the total number of people infected worldwide up until around 2007 is in the order of 85 million, 90 million, something like that. Half of those are dead and every 12 months we're seeing around 5 million new cases of which around 1.5 million are children and we're seeing around 3 million deaths. So the, the actual number of people alive with HIV has been relatively stable for quite a long time. It could increase uh, simply because life expectancy of people with HIV is getting longer thanks to better treatments which are becoming more widely available, especially in the poorest nations. Even though they're expensive for manufacturers to make and have to be taken for life and have many side effects and we can see a, a viral resistance developing. So 85, 90 million people, where are most of them? Well, as most people know, the majority of cases of HIV infection and AIDS are in sub-Saharan Africa. But the most uh, affected nation in terms of actual numbers of cases could be India. It's difficult to tell because uh, much of the population, of course, hasn't been tested and has no access to medical treatment and we only have sample surveys. But nevertheless, we are seeing explosive growth in some, uh, some communities in some of the largest cities in India. Our organization ASSET, for example, has seen the number of cases referred to us of people getting sick with HIV and AIDS had doubled every 12 months in Hyderabad, which is an area that's been on the radar screens of many multinational companies because that's where they outsource their call centers and things like that. We're also seeing rapid spread in places like Russia and Ukraine. In fact, although the actual numbers have been relatively small in percentage terms, they've been growing faster there than just about anywhere else. We're seeing significant spread in China, in Vietnam, in Cambodia, in Thailand too. But the good news is that HIV infection has been stabilized in, in a number of countries and has fallen dramatically in a few. Take Uganda, for example, where the number of young girls of the age of 15 with HIV has plummeted from 22%, that's around one in five, down to only 7%. Now it's starting to rise again because unfortunately every year we get another generation of young people who happen to think that HIV is blown away in the wind, they don't need to worry about it anymore, it's not so much in the newspapers and they start taking risks. So every year there's a new generation of people to reach, a new generation of people to treat, a new generation of orphans to look after. And that's the tragic thing that HIV selectively targets those in the most productive and effective years of their lives. So that in some villages in Africa, there are literally hardly any uh, parents of childbearing age, any adults of childbearing age, they're dead. And all we're left with is grandparents' generation looking after grandchildren. Or child-led households where a 14-year-old is looking after a 13-year-old, a 7-year-old, an 8-year-old and a 3-year-old child. All in the same house. But at least they're on their own land, they're not in some great big institution. And with a little bit of support from an agency like Asset, they can probably be maintained in their own village, in their own house, on their own land, growing their own food, and hopefully, with maybe no more support than a two or three pounds a month or five dollars a month, we can get them into full-time education as well. That's per child. So, it's a very serious situation. HIV is out of control still in most of the poorest parts of the world. 
But nevertheless, we know what to do to stop it. All you have to do is get people to talk about this illness, to embrace people, quite literally, who have it, to show that they're not afraid of this illness, that we can bring it as part of normal society, that with effective treatment, HIV can become a chronic condition rather than a terminal illness, and that we can fight for the human rights of those who have it, enabling them to get access to treatment and housing and other basic essentials which they need. And by showing a more compassionate face uh, that to our communities, towards those who have HIV, we will then encourage people to get tested, to get access to treatment, to know their own status, to be able to take steps to uh, protect those that they love, and, uh, and also, if they're uninfected, to be able to protect their own future.